Today we're going to reconcile a checking account, but to do that first we need to be able to read the bank statement. So I'm going to start by highlighting some information for you that you have a series of questions to fill in the answers for. So the period for the statement, which is question number one, is listed right here. It is 520.09 through 618.09. The account number for this statement is 047-678 which is listed under the account type. Um, there were three deposit made for a total of $1,980.68. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six checks that have cleared. And the total dollar amount of the cleared checks, you need to add those up. Um, so you take your, so the cleared check amount total is 15, 17, 17, 54, 12, 32, 27, 54, 47, 53, 97. So a total of uh, 1590 1, and 25 cents. So there are there was some ATM activity. You see ATM withdrawals here. This indicates which ATM was used, which is explained down here in the locations. So this location was at 2500 Center Plaza in Etown, USA. And it was a, on the 24th of May for $40. That's how you would read that. There are no check card activities. That would say check card up here and it would be listed up here with the, um, the debits. There were no service charges listed. That would be listed up here with the account information summary. There were a total of, seven, of 10 withdrawals. The amount was this amount, $1,000. $705.25. The new balance on the account is listed right here. It's $883.97. Then when I look down here to check of checks cleared, check 182 did clear. It's listed in my account. That's my statement. That's how I know it cleared. It was $17. Check 183 cleared. It was $217.54. But notice when I get here, there's an asterisk. That's because there's a gap between 184 and 186, which means that check number is missing. So check number 185 did not clear. And the amount of check for uh, 187 was $53.97. So that's how you read the, the bank statement itself. Then once you've learned how to do that, once you've done your checking count and you've kept your running total, you'll get a bank statement and you wanna check that your bank statement matches the information you have and that your balances add up. So to do that, you start by taking the information you have on your bank statement and marking the transactions as they're recorded up here, down here. This column right here is to mark that the transaction actually has gone through. So notice that I have check 161 right here. It is $216.30. It's right here for $216.30, so that has been recorded. Then I had check number 162. It's easier to follow this than this. That way you don't miss anything from up here because this is in order. 162 um, is check right here. It was for $82.87. That is correct. Then I have check number 163, which is right here. It was $1,000. That is correct. If there was an error on something here, you need to check that you wrote your check correctly and that the bank, bank recorded it correctly. And then you have to go in and file some, kind, uh, some paperwork with them. Then I have an ATM withdrawal on 618. So here's 1618 ATM withdrawal, $35. Then I have an ATM withdrawal on 625. 625 ATM withdrawal, $20. Then I have a check card used at Foodland for $55 on 618. So 618 check card, $55. And then another check card transaction on uh, 626 at the Easy Shop for $54.11. And then the last thing I have to um, 
mark off is my deposit for $1,200. So all these things in check in with red checks have gone through my checking account according to the bank. Then I'm going to use that information to reconcile my checkbook. The first thing I do is I start with the new balance. Remember the new balance is listed here. It's $103.69. So I write $103, whoops, $103.69. I'm going to change pen colors. It's a bad plan to do checkbook stuff in red unless it's an actual deficit. So $103.69 is my um, statement. And then any deposits that are listed here that didn't go through my, my account yet. So looking down here, I have one deposit for $253.17 that has not gone through my account. So I record that here. Then I write this total of all of the deposits. Well, there was only that one, so I'm just going to transfer that information to this square. And then I find my subtotal, adding these two things together. I have 103.69 plus 253.17. That gives me $356.86. Then I have to figure out which um, debits didn't go through, which are like my check numbers and my check cards and uh, any checks that didn't go through yet. So looking here on my account, I have check number 164 for $26.31. And then I have check number 165 for $10. So then I would find the total of those. That's going to give me $36.31. I write that over here and I subtract that. Then I take my 356 and 86 cents and I subtract my $36.31. That gives me $320.55, which should be the same as my running balance total at the end. 320.55. So my checkbook has matched. So information that they wanted you to use, we've done over here on the side. So what was the new balance? It was $103.69. What was the total amount of the deposit slips listed in the check register but not shown on the check? That was the $253.17. What was the sum of the new total? That was $356.86. What is the total amount of outstanding checks and withdrawals. That was $36.31. And what was my ending balance? That was my subtraction and it gave me $320.55. And again, since it matched my register's running balance, my checkbook has been reconciled.